Colonel Mike Fossum, Colonel Ron Guerin, we thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. First off, you two are in the midst of your first expeditions on the International Space Station, six months each for you guys up there. Colonel Fossum, can you tell us a little bit about some of the research and the work that the crew is doing up there? We're in a period of transition right now on the space station. Uh, with the departure of uh, Space Shuttle Atlantis a couple of weeks ago, uh, we've, we've moved out of the assembly phase and into the utilization phase. First step in that, though, is putting away the thousands of pounds of stuff that they brought up here. And we began uh, really turning up the heat this week on, the, uh, on getting a lot of the facilities. And in some cases, it was literally turning the heat up to begin activating a lot of the science, uh, science facilities. You know, I completed the first round in a plant growth uh, experiment today where one uh, uh, set of the plants were growing in zero gravity, the other set were growing in a centrifuge, spinning in, in exactly the same temperature and conditions, you know, at 1G to simulate being on Earth. Funny, to come up to space to simulate being on Earth. So that's just an example. We're activating a, a furnace facility going through some of its stabilization checkouts right now, and really from one end to the other, we're, we're bringing these systems up and online. At the same time, we're the guinea pigs for a lot of the studies ourselves. We're bones, muscles, those kind of things. You gentlemen rode up on the uh, Russian ship. It was the first time for that for you all. Can you talk about the differences between going up on a shuttle as compared to going up on a Soyuz craft? Yeah, that, you know, really there is a there is quite a difference. You know, the, the space shuttle is this massive, you know, vehicle that you that you're riding inside and it's shaking and it's it's you know there's just just tremendous amount of force. Um, the the Soyuz, on the other hand, it's it's kind of it's it's a much smaller vehicle. You're you're crammed in there really really tight, uh, and it's almost as if you're wearing it. So you're you're wearing this spacecraft and and you're launching it. They're both wonderful experiences, but they're very very different. Uh, but but the, I guess the common theme between the two of them is, you know, it takes a lot of energy to get something uh, into into orbit. It, it takes, you know, you have to propel it to the velocity of five miles a second. So, uh, you know, that takes a lot of energy and a lot of force. And in both cases, you feel that there's a, there's a lot of power behind you. Now, Colonel Guerin, before he put the hat on, I'm not sure if you were aware that Colonel Fossum was an Aggie. Uh, he may have made it abundantly clear in the last mission and the work that you guys have done on the expedition. Can you talk a little bit about how a guy from Yonkers and an Aggie get along? Well, that, I'm, well, that's news to me. I, I had never known that uh, Mike was uh, was an Aggie, uh, but you know the, what we have in common is we're both Aggie dads. So uh, you know we we uh, both have a great love of that uh, university. Uh, I didn't I didn't get to go to that university, but uh, we both have a great love. Yeah, well, I didn't get to go. <laughs> I, get to go. <laughs> I could be an Aggie. <laughs> so, but uh, you know, but to balance, you know, to balance the universe out, though, for uh, in my personal uh, family's point of view, you know, my Aggie's identical twin is also is a Longhorn. So we we had to balance out the equation a little bit. So that's uh, a house divided and a family divided and a spaceship divided, probably with that. Uh, talk a little bit about Colonel what you brought up, Aggie related, uh, besides the hat. If you brought anything this time. Oh, you bet. I've got the uh, I've got my uh, 12-man towel for uh, foot when football season starts. I've got some pennants. I've got uh, an, an extra Aggie ring with me for a, a very dear friend. And uh, so there's uh, there's it happens to be a little bit of maroon up here. Now, Texas A&M didn't land one of the retiring shuttles. They would bid for it, but the engineering school is due to get a shuttle simulator. Colonel Fossum, what does that mean for the students and the instructors there, and, and how quickly are you going to be uh, up to Aggieland to help out once that simulator gets up and running? Oh, I can't wait to get back up to Aggieland. Uh, actually, a trip to A&M was one of the last things I did before I left Houston to go to uh, go to Russia to uh, complete the final preparations for launch out of uh, Kazakhstan. Made a quick run up to A&M, and I can't wait to get up there and see it. I'm really excited that A&M got the uh, the shuttle simulator. That's that simulator was a big part of our lives, Ron's and mine together, actually, because we flew together on uh, STS-124 three years ago. So we spent a lot of time in that space shuttle simulator preparing for that mission. And and I think it's really exciting because the, the students and faculty will have their hands on some real hardware that was a critical piece of our nation's space program for, for that particular piece of hardware for about 35, 37 years. So it's, and it's, it's real stuff, and they can actually reprogram it to fly it as other vehicles, and it'll be a great thing to, uh, to use to learn with real hands-on. 
You guys watched the last shuttle come up to you and then leave for Earth one last time. What did that mean to you, too, and has it even sunk in yet that the shuttle program has come to an end? Yeah, I mean, that, that, was, a, that was bittersweet. I mean, we realized that we were witnessing history uh, unfold before us. We realized that, you know, a chapter of our nation's history, a chapter of, uh, of space exploration was closing. But, you know, we are filled with confidence and optimism that, you know, that closing of that chapter uh, leads to the opening of a new chapter and a new era of space exploration that will see us leaving low Earth orbit and exploring the solar system. No, you two are both on Twitter. Like You've been sending out messages and pictures from space. Uh, Colonel Fossum, you took some amazing shots that included uh, the one with the northern lights going off in the sky. You watched the shuttle go back to Earth. You took those pictures and you're sending those messages. First off, I guess, how has social media changed things for you guys up there? Oh, it, it changes things because we're able to share the experience uh, in almost real time. And, and that's just really, really amazing. You're not, we're, you're not limited and we're not limited to, uh, you know, the short interviews that we're able to do like this because we don't have time. But sometime in our spare time, we can put together our thoughts, send out pictures and our thoughts associated with those. And, and we're really, I think we both feel a deep sense of history that we're, we're in the closing pages of a 30-year history, you know, of the shuttle program. And we're very, very fortunate to have lived through this time, but recognizing also that most of America, most of the country, only knows us as a country that flies space shuttles on a fairly routine basis with a lot of people coming and going from space. And that chapter is, has, has ended. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how things move in the, in the you know, years to come. Now, the last time you two were in space, you were joined on a discovery by Captain Mark Kelly. And obviously, uh, the Tucson shooting and his wife's injuries, they had an impact on the entire nation. Can you guys give some perspective, though, on how that incident and, and Mark's uh, going through that impacted the NASA family? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head. It is a NASA family, and I've still got my uh, Peace Love Gabby bracelet on uh, in support of her recovery uh, and, and in support of the, the uh, other victims of that terrible tragedy. And, um, yeah, we, we all felt that. Uh, Gabby's a dear friend of all of ours, and uh, and not not just that. I mean, she's done a tremendous amount of uh, work for, this, for her space program. She's been a big uh, proponent of our space program. She believes how critically important space exploration is to the future of not only our country, but the world um, and uh, you know that all affected us all uh, personally the next trip for Aggie land uh, f uh, to Aggie land for an Aggie dad and an Aggie when are you guys next planning on uh, coming to College Station well I'm gonna be going to a football game for sure I don't know if Mike, Mike won't be back will you be back no, in no, time I'll okay back. he'll be back in time yeah, I'll be I'll be back by the uh, by the end of football season, and look forward to uh, getting back up there to uh, see my son and a lot of good friends up there. Well, when you guys come back, we'd love to spend some time with you as well. But for now, uh, have a, a fantastic rest of the mission and uh, your message for Aggie Land before you go. <laughs> Giga Maggie's. Whoop. Whoop. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen, very much. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you when you're back on Earth. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, New York Daily News and KBTX-TV. Station, we are now resuming operational communications.